Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to go into specifics about alcohol and neurodegeneration or neuroinflammation. Right? Last week, we talked about different lifestyles, uh, lifestyle factors that can impact neuroinflammation. And today, we're going to go specifically into alcohol and how alcohol will uh, impact a specific part of the brain called the cerebellum. Okay, so alcohol and neuroinflammation. Neuroinflammation, if it's pre existing or you have a degenerative neural uh, cognitive decline, right, especially with the cerebellum, when you take in alcohol, it can start impacting the anterior lobe of the cerebellum. And you will start to develop what we call ataxia, maybe instability of gait. You might be bumping into things. When you turn the light off and you're walking in the dark, you get unstable. You always have to stand with a wide stance gate where your feet are wide apart because you're unstable. When you reach for something, your hand will shake, right? Those signs and symptoms will be exacerbated by drinking alcohol. So if you already have neuroinflammation, a condition that causes neuroinflammation like ADD, ADHD, concussions, um, uh, Alzheimer's or any autoimmune disease and you have degenerative processes and you drink alcohol it's going to affect the cerebellum right so oftentimes there people will have what we call ataxia right unstable gait they call it idiopathic sporadic ataxia means people will come in and they have unknown cause of imbalance right they can't get their balance correct and when they do brain imaging, everything looks great. There's no issues, but they're unstable. Oftentimes, these patients have gluten-related ataxia. Gluten, proteins, or peptides will start to look like, or does look like, some cerebellar tissue, and you can have degeneration as a result of having gluten, right? That in itself is inflammatory because it's degenerating the cerebellum. So if you took alcohol on top of that, or a, a beer which has gluten in it, along with the alcohol, you get a double whammy. So if you have someone who has idiopathic sporadic ataxia, where they, have, they feel like there's unknown causes, right? Their neurologist says, we don't know what the cause is. They could potentially have gluten sensitivity reacting to the cerebellum and then when they drink alcohol with gluten all their symptoms really come out they get bombed basically with one or two drinks of beer because it has gluten and it has alcohol right basically the field sobriety test so if you ever get pulled over and they say you know follow my finger right stand on one leg um walk walk in a tandem gait this is all cerebellar in nature. They're looking to see if alcohol has impacted the cerebellum. And it's a pretty sensitive test because they can pick out probably 95, 96% of people who have alcohol in their system by doing this test, right? If their levels are higher than, high enough. So the field sobriety test is basically a cerebellum test. So if you went and Googled it and watched the few videos and you ask yourself, can I do this when I don't have any alcohol in my system? Can I stand with my feet together, close my eyes, right? Can I walk a straight line? Can I close my eyes and just stand there for 20 seconds, right? If you can't, you may have some cerebellar deficiencies, right? So look at that. Mood changes and depression can also occur, right? Uh, oftentimes people don't realize that alcohol will impact not just uh, the brain tissue in terms of the cerebellum, but it also has to be filtered or detoxified through the liver. So liver, uh, if you stress your liver, it, it creates inflammatory cytokines. It will get into an area and cause more inflammation in the brain, causing mood changes or depression. Binge drinking. Binge drinking versus drinking like one or two glasses of wine can do more damage to the brain. So let's say you can have one or two beers a night for seven days, right? And you'll be fine. 
But if you took that, let's say you had two beers a night, you have 14 beers on the weekend or one day, you're binge drinking and the high level of alcohol in your system will break down the blood brain barrier. It'll damage the blood brain barrier. So how the protective coating basically on the brain will be broken down. And all of a sudden things that should not cross into the brain will cross and create symptoms, especially with the cerebellum in terms of how the alcohol impacts the brain. So alcohol consumption, if you have inflammation, if you have neuroinflammation, you have cognitive decline, you have sporadic ataxia, don't drink alcohol. Very simple, right? Alcohol should not be in the equation. So if you have neuroinflammation, autoimmune disease, ADD, ADHD, or any of these types of conditions, you should not be drinking it, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.